So hello, uh, welcome to the day two of the Open Infra Summit and welcome to my lightning talk about uh, Canonical's Cloud Pricing Survey 2022 yearly results. Um, Titus Kurek here, I'm a product manager at Canonical and uh, I'm going to start with a short exercise. So please raise your hands up if you would normally tip a waiter in a restaurant. That's pretty obvious, right? Uh, but please raise your hands up if you would tip your cloud service provider. There's no one, right? Uh, and I can tell you that uh, your observations are very much in line with our observations from the survey as well, where around 24% of the respondents said that they would normally tip a waiter, but they would not tip a cloud service provider. But let's be serious now. So uh, Canonical Cloud Pricing Survey 2022 uh, is uh, a survey that was run to collect various information around uh, cloud infrastructure spendings uh, to investigate how does, uh, how, how is cost one of the driving factors around uh, infrastructure choices and what's important for people when it comes to various infrastructure choices. It was hosted for two months, from the 7th of April to 21st of May. It consisted of uh, 40 questions around uh, the current uh, status of the infrastructure at various organizations, you know, what types of clouds are they using, are those public clouds, are those private clouds, if so, which types of clouds, how do the cost shapes when it comes to the infrastructure deployments, infrastructure operations, what is important from people from the cost perspective when it comes to infrastructure choices. And uh, we've got some very good results. We captured responses from more than uh, 300 uh, people uh, and organizations who participated in the survey. And uh, we've got a pretty good distribution across uh, various industries and, and roles. Um, so the main conclusion that we've drawn after running this survey is that cost is one of the main drivers behind cloud infrastructure choices, right? So if you think about it, you know, for organizations run their workloads, uh, some of them run them in hyperscalers, some of them run them in, you know, local public cloud infrastructure, but some of them are building their own private cloud infrastructure, right? And what is the main driver behind these choices, like this selection, like where is my workload going to run, is the cost. Is the co cost is the main driver, right? And just to justify this message, uh, the first uh, response, the, the first question from the survey I'm going to showcase was, do you feel your organization pays a lot for cloud infrastructure? With more than 57% of the respondents said yes. So. Infrastructure costs a lot. Maintaining an infrastructure costs a lot. If you're running a business, definitely IT infrastructure, like your business applications need to run somewhere, this is going to be one of your main uh, drivers for the entire budget of, of, of your business. Like you need to allocate a number of budget to maintain your cloud infrastructure, right? Uh, and interestingly, so over the last two years, there's been a feeling that cloud infrastructure spendings have been increasing with more than 83% of the respondents saying yes, they've been seeing an increase in cloud infrastructure spendings. This is also very much relevant to, you know, um, pandemic, right? So obviously during the pandemic, we've seen an increase in the number of uh, uh, internet usage and, and uh, internet services usage, you know, things like video conferencing, for example, a lot of organizations move to uh, a remote working culture uh, that increased the need for you know a number of uh, 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 video conferencing uh, connections and stuff like that, right? Uh, but it's also very in line with what we've seen by various uh, analysts and various analytic reports with uh, IDC uh, Cloud Pulse report from 2019 saying that 80, uh, sorry, 85 percent of businesses report cloud repatriation activities these days, right? So all of those organizations who initially embraced hyperscalers started experiencing uh, increasing cost over time and are, are now moving their workloads back to an on-prem infrastructure. And it's also very much relevant to another report that we've seen coming from the market uh, from 451 Research Group 
saying that 62% of enterprises are pursuing a hybrid IT strategy. So we asked that question because we knew that there is something behind it, right? So hybrid clouds, like what was, if, if you already have a hybrid cloud environment, what was the reason for building one? And if you are not using a hybrid cloud yet, but if you would be about to build one, what would be the main reason to, to, to build one? And the answer was cost optimization. So running workloads where it makes most sense from the economics standpoint, right? Uh, so obviously, you know, public clouds provide highly scalable resources that can be used on demand, but they're expensive in the long term and at scale. And this is one of the main drivers why organizations are building their own infrastructure. But using those two in a hybrid model becomes a kind of a trend because it helps to optimize cost at scale. And if you think about it, where is it coming from? So we can take a look at the cost analysis between public clouds and private clouds. And from the CapEx point of view, like the capital expenditures, obviously the cost of running a public cloud is almost zero, right? Because at, at the end of the day, what you need to do is to attach your credit card to a billing system and then you get charged for the amount of resources that you consume. But if you're building a private cloud, the CapEx cost is relatively high because you have to purchase a hardware, you need to pay licenses if that's not an open infrastructure, if that's VMware, for example, right? Uh, but from the OPEX point of view, so the operational expenses, costs grow very quickly when running workloads in a public cloud in the long term and at scale. That basically doesn't scale well. Uh, while in a private cloud, assuming a fixed capacity, the OPEX cost is relatively low and it's pretty much flat. So if we sum those two together, we get a total cost of ownership, a TCO, and this is basically how it looks like. We can also put it on a single chart. So obviously, at some point, public clouds are preferred because if you're, if you're starting your business, uh, if you run just a few business applications, then you're not going to consume a lot of resources and there's no need to build your own infrastructure, right? So public clouds are a very good response to, to this type of businesses. But at some point, it makes much more sense to use this hybrid or multi-cloud architecture with both private cloud and public cloud at the same time. And that was also very much relevant to our respondents with 59% uh, of them saying that TCO, so a total expenses over a period of time, is, more, is the most important for you compared to CapEx and OPEX goes as well. And when comparing TCO across a variety of cloud providers, it's obviously not uh, an easy thing because, uh, uh, well, hyperscalers provide this kind of a list price for the most typical instances, but when it comes to an own infrastructure, when it comes to OpenStack or VMware, it's not that easy, right? So 53%, uh, more than 53% of our respondents said that they use pricing calculators to help them make a judgment over a, a, around, you know, pricing across various cloud providers. So we have a pricing calculator for Chand OpenStack uh, that uh, I would encourage you to play with. Uh, you can, you know, check various numbers and see how does a pricing compare to running your workloads in hyperscalers. Uh, but that's pretty much it. It's a lightning talk. Uh, full results from this survey are coming in uh, late July, early August. Uh, we still need to aggregate those results. Uh, we are about to analyze them with some external influencers, and we'll be publishing them in the form of a full report uh, that will be available at uh, our website at uh, Ubuntu.com. Uh, we have Five minutes left in case someone would like to take a pleasure to ask questions. There is a microphone uh, in the center of the stage over here. So if you have any questions, I would be very much happy to answer those. Yes. So as I said, uh, this is a very simplistic graph to just you know showcase you know uh, very quickly how those costs shape. But obviously, I'm assuming a fixed capacity here. So if the number of workloads 
grows in a private cloud, you obviously need to add more nodes, and this obviously translates into higher OPEX costs because, well, you need more space, you need more hardware, you need more electricity to power those, but yeah, totally get their point. I yeah. guess my real question is, is there an analysis that really actually accounts for things like more staff, having to open second data center, having to go to 24-7 support, and those kinds of things to compare? We're, so what we're going to include in this report is like, like three different scenarios, uh, assuming you know three completely different type of applications that uh, work at different scales, and uh, we'll be happy to present you know how the cost shapes for those when run across a variety of cloud providers. So for this kind of you know small scale environments, public clouds obviously much cheaper, but when the number of workloads grow, well at scale, private cloud infrastructure is definitely you know. Uh, better choice from the coast point of view. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, in case there are no more questions, that's the end of the lightning talk. So thank you very much for your attention.